Hey guys, welcome back. In the last tutorial, we looked at having our button on the screen uh, change the text every time we pr press the button. In this tutorial, we're going to be continuing that concept, but now we're going to be changing our UI image that we've made uh, to go along with the text. Every time we press the button, the text will change and the UI image will change. So yeah, let's get started. So if you remember, we already have this UI element and we'll look over here in our hierarchy and look at that. So we've got this image, UI image element, which if we look here in our scene, we'll see it's right here. Okay. And we can look on our, our main game screen and it's here. So right now it comes in as a white image, but we want that to be, you know, any image, right? So, you know, for, for this, why don't we, you know, I'll give you a second, go online. You can either go into Photoshop or your favorite uh, image editor. You can make three images or you can go into Photoshop or, or you can go online and download some. Uh, I'm going to go online and download just a couple just to show you that you can use any from online. So I'll just go to Google. I'm going to, just for fun, I'm going to put in UGA and I'm going to search for um, images. Let me show you guys what I'm doing here. So let's have, let's see, I'm going to download this guy. We're going to save image and I'm just going to save it to my desktop. And this is a PNG it looks like. So we're going to save that. Uh, let's see. You know, I don't think the ice hockey guys get enough love. So we'll, well, I kind of want to, well, you know what? Let's do this guy. Oh, not link cancel. We want to save image and we're going to save that as a uh, dog. And that's also going to be to my desktop. And let's do a third image. I would say the ice hockey, but the shape is kind of weird. Oh, here we go. We'll just do the arches. And we're going to call this arches. Arches. And that's going to be saved to our desktop. We're going to save that. All right, cool. So. There's many different ways. Once we've downloaded these uh, these images here, uh, let's just go. We're going to show in the Finder and close this out. So we've got this Finder open. So there's a couple of different ways to um, to do this, uh, and and I'll show you each one of those ways. Uh, the my favorite and just easiest way to import objects is we go to our project, our import images. We go to our project. Oh, well, let me describe what we have. So you have to import in all these things. So just like with the script, the script here was we, we made it. So it was it wasn't imported, but it it is in our project now and it lives here, right? So anything else we're going to use in here, so any kind of art, models, text, fonts, any of that is going to go in our assets folder. So the first thing we want to do is let's go ahead and create another folder. So what I did is I right clicked, I go to create, I go to folder, then I'm going to name this. Um, Let's name this images. And this is where all my image assets are going to go. So I'm going to open that up. Let's open up our finder again, bring it up. Let's go to those three. So three images. So we have the arches. Here's again, guys, this is my favorite way to import things. I can just go to, if you're on Windows, you go to your Explorer window. If you're on Mac, you'll go to your finder window and just hold that down and just drag it right over here. And as you can see, it imported right here. Let's do that with our other three images too. We got the dog. And we also had the, uh, I think, did we call it untitled? What did I call it? I thought it was a PNG. Oh, it was a download. Let's bring that over here too. And close this out. So now we have these three images. So once you import an image, you can also, when you click on it, you can see uh, a preview of it right here. It lets you know the, the resolution. This is 225 by 225. The NPOT means it's a non, excuse me, it is a, a non power of two image. And we'll talk about that later. It's really good for your images to be in a power of two. Uh, this is more for compression reasons. And when you're building an app, you really want the app to be as small as possible. And one of the gotchas is always this, uh, this size of your image. And we'll talk about how to get in, how to get, to get this down to a NPOT file. 
later. But for right now, we're going to leave it as is just to get to the coding part. If we hit the dog, we'll also see this here. And we can see the G. And we can see its resolution as well. So cool. We have these three things in. Um, and what we want to do when we import these, I'm going to click on the arches. And if you look in the inspector up here, the texture type. You want to make sure for, for these things that we're using Sprite. Now, it did I'll go ahead and import this as a Sprite 2D and UI. It will be used in UI, so we want to make sure this says Sprite 2D and UI. And we're going to do the same thing for all those. So they're all there. That's good. Now, what we can do, if we want to associate one of these images with the image in our scene, we will go to the image up here. Look up in Hierarchy. We're going to go ahead and click on the image, select it. And now we can look in the inspector where the image is here. And now if you look, it's looking for a sprite. So let's just go ahead and go down in, in the, in the uh, images folder down here in, the, in your project panel. And we're going to drag that over here. So look what happened. It went ahead and brought that into our image panel. Looks kind of weird. There's some different things you can do. You can, you can hit this button here called preserve aspect. See what it did there? So it go ahead and it preserved that original aspect so it's not being stretched. Otherwise, it's going to try and stretch to fit the target. Image type is simple. We're not going to mess with these. We want to keep it simple. Because if you do sliced or other things, there's just different, uh, it's just how it's going to fill in. And we want to keep it as simple for now. The only thing we really, you can change, you can preserve aspect if you want. So I'll probably do that. Now, if we did that and we change, so we can change and let's change, put the dog in. And we can do the same thing for this G, which is called download two. And again, we can take off preserve aspect and you see how that would change. So yeah, so we've got that. Let's go ahead and put the arches back in. And now, <clears throat> now that we've got these imported, we still haven't figured out how we're going to get this image to change every time this button gets hit. So, the first thing that I can think of that I would like to do is I would like to go ahead and store these images in memory and every time I hit this button it's going to rotate through these images. Okay, So we can use the same logic we used earlier um, and we can use, um, well, there, I'll show you two different ways. I'll show you an efficient way and I'll show you one that takes a little more, uh, little more processing uh, time. Um, the first way is probably the easiest so I'll show you. Let's go to, let's open up our script again. And again, I'm going to make this a little smaller so you can see where we were. So again, as before, we have a reference to your texture and we also have a reference to the integer. Well, now we're going to need a reference to the image, right? So let's go ahead and I like to keep my public things together and my private things together. So we're going to hit public image that's what it is image we're going to call this my image so, and then we're going to file we're going to go to save all go back to unity make sure that it's compiling it did no errors we're going to click on canvas so we can see over here on the right this button logic script it doesn't have an image, so we're going to drag over the image from the inspector over here. And we're going to put it right there in the button logic script. So now we have a reference to our image and we have a reference to our texture. So let's go back to our script. And but now every time we hit this button, we still don't know what uh, what image we're going to be working with, right? So let's go ahead and create references to the three images, and they're going to be they're going to be sprites, okay? Um, without going too much detail, what a sprite is a sprite is another a name for uh, like digital textures. Actually, we could look it up right now. I can give you the the full definition of a sprite. And we can just look up at the UI manual. The, the cool thing, another thing I like about Unity, we have this documentation website. So you can always go to the docs.unity3d.com uh, manual if you look at the top. So this tells you what Sprite is. And it says Sprites are 2D graphic objects. If you're used to working in 3D, Sprites are essentially just standard textures. 
But there are special techniques for combining and managing these. So I'll, you can go through here and read this if you want. We will be using the sprite editor later. But sprites are pretty much, anytime you see a texture in, in the game, uh, that is a sprite. So don't get confused with the UI image uh, because in the image we do use sprites in our image. So just know that because we are, this is, the arches part is the sprite of this image uh, component. So an image is really the name of the script. It tells you how you can manipulate the script, but a sprite is part of the image. Sorry, right, so let's go back to our code. So now we need references. You know, we need to know what images we're going to store. So maybe let's just create a couple of public, let's create a public sprite. So we go down here, we can see there's sprites are option. And we're going to call this uh, arches. So I'll show you a couple of different ways we can do this. We can do a public sprite arches. We can do another public sprite uh, dog, D-A-W-G, right? And then we're going to go public sprite. And the other one was the uh, G, I believe, right? We're going to do a capital G. And then we're going to go file, save all. Go back to Unity, make sure it compiles. Okay, let's click on our canvas because that's where our sprite is. And we can see here we have three places for sprites and they're named by Arches, Dog, and G that we just coded in. So let's go to our project and let's go ahead and drag in Arches for the Arches, Dog for the Dog, and G for the G. So great, now we have our, our script now has a reference to these three images. Let's go back to our script. Now to save space, this is a trick that I like to do, is since all three of these are sprites, we could have put all this in one line. And we'll do that now. Let's just delete this. We'll delete the, um, we'll put a comma there. So we delete our semicolon because we didn't need it and we just put a comma. So this is the same thing as this. So let's put them back on one line again. So this is kind of nice if you have a bunch of objects that are the same thing, it just saves a line of code. But we can file, we can save all, and we'll show you that it will still be interpreted as the same thing here. Okay? All right, beautiful. So we know this compiled, everything's good. Let's go back to our script. And now what we'll do is every time this button is pressed, we're gonna change it. So we already had this code, if you remember how this code works. So we are, we, we arches is the first one. So what we'll do now is we want it to go between these three things. Um, so let's do, we can base it on my integer. There's a couple of different ways we can, we can do this. Let's, let's write another function called public. Well, public void. Uh, we're going to call this change image. Open and close parentheses, open bracket, close bracket. And now every time this one gets called, this is going to change our image. 